Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome. Welcome to another Titan of Grave Honors video game review, TGVGR. Glad you could join us. Halo. <laughs> Halo. <clears throat> so, uh. Not a sponsorship for the mini oranges, I just realized. What's that? Just saying. Bad joke, never mind, what? <laughs> I, I missed it. Oh, mini oranges? Ha. Yeah, not a sponsorship for those tiny oranges. Hear it. I have too many ads. <laughs> too many ads. Oh my goodness. So, um, we're gonna get started here in just a minute, but real quick, um, uh, I had a streamer <laughs> make a song about me this morning. Uh, he was chronicling my uh, trials and tribulations in League of Legends, and uh, mm -hmm. we were able to get a clip of that. So I'm going to play that for you guys right now. This was by the legendary streamer Paul Hebs, uh, who is who is my own personal bard, apparently. And he's been following me around. And uh, actually, I might even be able to, to show this video. Let, let me see if I can get it to... Let me see if I can get it to show. Ah, there we go. There's Paul's beautiful mug right there. So here you go. We're going to play this song by Paul Hebs. Guaranteed to become a new hit. Um, I'm sure it'll be available on iTunes and topping the charts here soon. Here we go. This is a story about a titan and his quest for his revenge. There once was a man named Titan's Revenge. He was salty on leave, he got unfairly banned. So he made an account. To piss everybody off But then Riot gave him his account <laughs> back He never ever, ever looked back He wants to play Teemo forever <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Hebs we're going to clap for that. <laughs> Definitely clapping for that. So, um, yeah, I appreciate the song, Paul. And uh, <laughs> he's playing a Les Paul Hebs, by the way. It's a Les Paul Hebs guitar. And um, actually, I haven't really told or talked to Grave Honor about this yet, but uh, Paul Hebs is wanting to be a guest on next Tuesday's show. He's going to talk with us about some video games and some Pokemon and uh, you know, the kind of, I think he's a teacher for a living, and he plays a guitar, and uh, I think he'll be a really interesting guest. So next Tuesday, we're going to try to get Paul Hebs on here. How about that? Nice. 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 So guys, <laughs> this might be a, a little bit longer podcast than usual. We, um, <clears throat> we usually go for about an hour, but since we're going to be discussing the new Nintendo Direct and that actual Direct was about half an hour or so in itself, um, we're going to be looking at trying to, uh, to get down on some discussion on that. So feel free, feel free to uh, chime in in the chat with your, your thoughts and, and things because I'm sure some of these reactions to some of these upcoming games, myself included, are going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Am I the only one here that's actually watched it? If it is, I don't mind, because I like I want to see people's reactions, if so. <laughs> I know you you got to hear a little bit of my reaction last night because of one game in particular I saw coming to the Switch. And, uh, man, it really makes me want to run out and get it. All right, that's guys. That's the plan. All right, guys, so we're going we're gonna to get it started. And uh, we'll we'll discuss this. At, we'll we'll pause this in between um, game announcements and and discuss it a little bit. So here we go. Time to get it started. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. 
All right, guys. So there you go. There's the first one. That's uh, <clears throat> Super Mario Maker 2 coming out June 2019. What do you guys think of that? I I, I personally was not. I, well, I can't say I'm not a fan. I never actually played the first Mario Maker, but I, I'm really not yeah. into that type of game. I never played it either, but I can see the appeal, like making your own Mario level. That was just for creative sake, because I'm sure many people who played Mario are like, man, I wish it, this level was like this or that. And it's like, oh, well, now you can. And it looks like they added um, 3D models. I don't know if they had it the first time. And they also added Kitty Cat Mario, which I give huge kudos to that. <laughs> That was the main reason I bought the Wii U, one for the cat outfits. Yeah, I remember playing that at your house, actually. Mm -hmm. Just uh, meowing things. Um, so I I personally, like, it looks cool, and I'm glad they're using some of the, the updated models so that it doesn't just, like, everything look like Super Mario World, kind of. Um, but for me, like, I, I did watch some streamers who played that game, and I think it was more about making the most difficult level ever. <laughs> more than it yeah, was about actually playing. So, um, I'll, I'll say my excitement level on this one is um, maybe like a 2 out of 10. But that's just me. Out of the excitement range? Yeah, my excitement for yeah. this, this game coming out is probably, probably a 2 out of 10. Yeah, probably about the same for me. I wasn't really too excited about it, but... Well, that's pretty cool. I mean, people like it, so they're bringing them... So at least they're not, you know, ignoring them. Yeah. You're breaking up just a little bit, but it's not, like, real bad. Ah! <laughs> stupid headphones. That's okay. Maybe I'm just talking, like, too fast. I know. For people for people who are into that game, I could see that number being a lot higher. But for me personally, yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I have not actually played, like, sat down and played a, 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 any Super Mario Brothers game um, in forever. Uh, I think the last one I attempted to play was the one we were just talking about when I played it on the Wii U at your house. Mm, yeah, that's probably the last time I played it too, even though I got um, Odyssey for the Switch. Yeah. So, okay. Well, let's move on to the next game, the next reveal here. Hi, everyone. I'm Yoshiaki Koizumi, and I'll be your guide for today's Nintendo Direct. So far, the video's working okay? Yeah, seems to be. Sweet. You just got your first look at the brand new I should do his voice over Mario instead. Maker, which we're, of course, calling Super Mario Maker <laughs> 2. Yo, Ron, how's it going? Yoshiaki Koizumi pronunciation. And many new elements are in development as we speak. So please, stay tuned. All right. Next, let's cover today's Nintendo Switch headlines. It's weird though, they're only doing like Nintendo Switch news, and um, they say they don't want the DS to die, but I haven't years. heard anything the Marvel Ultimate about Alliance it in a long time regarding new, new games other than Persona Q2. And, huh. all new original story. and they the haven't done a direct about 3DS in a while, I think. Of Marvel superheroes, from the Guardians of the Galaxy to the Avengers, Defenders, X-Men, and more, to Ooh. stop Thanos and the Black Order, from unleashing cosmic chaos. You can play together in TV mode, locally on up to four systems or online. And get closer to the action with a dynamic zoomed in heroic camera. And speaking of heroic, it's time to go higher, further, faster with Marvel's ultimate cosmic protector, Captain Marvel. Wield her power against those that would do harm to the universe. It's still kind of a shame for the up, 3DS no though, because I kind of... Carol I don't Danvers want to die, but probably literally. just because I had a lot of fun with it, but, you know, if it's done, it's done, it's skills, been doing really well for a long time. Their most powerful move. Whether you join forces with friends locally or online, take teamwork to unprecedented levels as you creatively combine hero skills into synergy attacks. Your most powerful attacks can even be combined into an Ultimate Alliance Extreme Attack. The team of possibilities will be off the charts when Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order launches exclusively on Nintendo Switch this summer. Alright, I'm just going to say it. That looks like a, a game made for a mobile phone. And... Someone else said that too. <laughs> Tyler Prime just said that. And, um... And they just said stick to the movies. Yeah, I'm not... I, I have not been a fan of Marvel video games since probably the old 8-bit Nintendo, like... They, they took a shot at stuff like X-Men and stuff like that, and so uh, I, I just was not. Um, 
I don't know. I, I can't really get into those kind of games anyway, but I think, like, the first Ultimate Alliance, which was uh, on the Xbox, I, I had that game, and I tried to play it, and I was like, I, I just, I don't know. I I think there's a bad history going all the way back with um, games that are based off of movies and things that just don't live up to it, but yeah, it looked like... Uh, that that looked bad. Like I that looked like I what's that? Um, there there's a Marvel Alliance game for the phone. There is literally a phone app, and for a phone yeah, app, it looks great. Yeah, there's superhero apps, and they are surprisingly pretty. Yeah, for, I wouldn't expect from mobile. For a phone app, it looks great, but to me, that looked like a phone app that you're gonna charge me to pay. <laughs> you know, charge me to play on a Switch that is not really better. It's it's. I, as much as I hate to admit it, it's the, uh, it's kind of like the the Harvest Moon Light of Hope look. It's got that just mobile graphics feel to it. Mm, I feel like I'm gonna be booed here. <laughs> Go ahead, say what you gotta say. I actually think my excitement rating would be like five out of ten. I'm not even that interested in superheroes, but it looks like it could be a fun beat 'em up game to play with some friends. And Nintendo's online thing is so cheap for like twenty dollars a year. Or less like that. I could see myself buying it if it got like a discount or got a sale. Hmm. And I'll just play with some people. But then again, my standards might be really low. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, I'll give it credit. It looks like it could be a decent party game. Like you, you and a bunch of buddies get together, beat them up kind of okay, thing. Yeah, just beat stuff up for some mindless entertainment. I, it's like I'm not a fan of superheroes, but I have seen some, I think, Marvel movies. Like the Thor ones, and I can't remember the names. And I didn't know anything, but they were pretty funny. Yeah. So... Well, well, I, as long as it's like a genre I like, I could take a look. I definitely can't give that as high as a five, though. <laughs> even even with the co-op, um, I would yeah. probably I would probably put this on the same level as Super Mario <clears throat> Maker, except probably less. I would actually probably rather own Super Mario Maker than this game. So you'd give it a one? Yeah, probably. I mean, Ooh. would I play it if it's free? Okay. Would I play it if it's free? Um. Mm, Maybe. I mean, there's. I know. I'd definitely give it a try if it was free. Cause I mean, you don't really lose the time. Yeah, you broke up real bad right there. Ugh. <laughs> I would try it if it's free because don't lose much except for a little bit of time right. if it's free. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd play it. So for do free. I just need to talk slower? Is that it? Maybe. Ah, oh, it's really hard. You talk too fast. Okay. Sorry. All right, let's see what's next. I'll do the button. Welcome back, box boy. Get ready to unload some boxes and have fun doing it. The critically acclaimed puzzle series Box Boy. Oh my boy god, I wonder if this is Nintendo by the same Switch people that did Cubic time. Ninja. This brand new game is tightly packed with tons of content, including brand new puzzles and new features. We fit something else in too. This time, two players can box it up together to restore peace on the box planet. When I first saw the Nintendo team, Direct, I did actually those um After completing think story, about not watching anymore. So I'm like, wow, these two starter games like not the way. thing I really hope to see. Like I was like trying to make my own ritual to hope for something all, else. But yeah. That's the highest this in the this game today. this is terrible. Use your brain like, boxes to think yeah, I'm sure it could be fun in a way, but I, would, I wouldn't want to pay for this game. Box boy and box yeah, girl. Nintendo's getting a bunch of indie Netflix stuff, Game which doesn't Netflix. appeal to a lot of people because they end up looking, you know, cheap. I mean, at least put the some thought behind it. Update. All right, guys, here you go. I see that in I see that Incineroar. Is about to spring forward with the version 3.0 update this spring. What are we adding, you ask? Mm -hmm. You'll just have to wait to find out. Remember, Joker is a part of Challenger Pack 1. He's secretly been preparing for battle, and his moment will finally come before the oh, end of April. Oh, the update, right. In other words, this year, springtime is the time to smash. And don't forget, new you heard Smash Brothers series time to and smash. figures are on the way, too. Hey, those are pretty cool. The Pokemon stuff are pretty cool. There's even more to explore in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. It's never too late for a journey through the maze-like miniature worlds of the Captain Toad Treasure Tracker game. In oh yeah, fact, they're starting to very slowly trickle out the DLC stuff for Smash. 
After a new update, all courses will support two-player co-op. Maybe Captain Toad won't be so nervous with someone at his side. Two heads okay. are better than this, one, this and looks an extra right. set of hands goes a long way. This free update will be available DLC? later today. And some paid downloadable content is coming. I mean, now that it's co -op. We're adding in 18 new challenges that'll see you traveling to five new courses. From sunken ships to a kingdom of sweets. Just wondering if I'm like delayed on the video. Are you is like courses. you're talking about Smash still or is it on to the next thing? It's showing um Toad. Ah oh, dang it, so yeah, I'm a bit behind. <laughs> Toad and Toadette must That's okay. I, I need to pause it in between. I just all of which can be played I'll pause it after Toad with a second you. player. Captain no, I mean, it's okay. I'll catch up in like a few seconds. For as soon as Just well, let me know, today, like, if I'm behind or something. To one of the, courses. the rest of the content will launch on March 14th. But yeah, I didn't have, have too much look interest in Captain Toad, but it does look like a very cute game, and the co-op is pretty cute, and it's just a free update, too. And gives you access to Captain Toad Treasure Tracker special episode once it's available. Okay, so, I mean... The, the Captain Toad looks okay. I still wouldn't say it's like... It's definitely good, not gonna be... It, it's not a title that's like, Oh, dude, I gotta go pick up a Switch right now. Um, but... Considering the lack of... Uh, quality co-op games, it looks like it could be okay. Also, did it say local co-op or online? I, I don't know. I think it just said two-player co-op. Let me go back and look. I would honestly guess it would be local, but then again, I wasn't sure. I think it just said... Let's see. Did it say local? Did it say... Let me see. Man, it's hard to skip on this player. Joker is a part of Challenger right, Patch Joker. 1. He's secretly been preparing for battle, and his moment will finally come before the end of April. Yeah, maybe it's it doesn't say it might just be for both. Is yeah, it could time be for to both, smash. But let me see what it says here. And don't forget, new Super Smash Brothers series amiibo figures are on the way too. I don't mind too. seeing the Pokemon amiibos again. Those are cute. There's even more to explore in right, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. It's never too late for a journey through the maze-like miniature worlds of the Captain Toad Treasure Tracker game. In fact, we have two new announcements for the Nintendo Switch version. After a new update, all courses will support two-player co-op. Maybe Captain Toad won't Yeah, it just says we'll support two-player co-op. It doesn't say which one it is. It just says two-player co-op, so... So let's just be optimistic and hope it says both or it means both. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's both, that's great. Um, couch co-op is cool, but, you know, it's kind of hard if you want to play with your buddy. Like, like if me and Atomic Prime want to play or, you know, me and you want to play... Uh, Atomic Prime's been my, my League of Legends buddy the past couple weekends. It's been kind of fun. Um, but yeah, like, it's hard to... I, I Couch co-op is becoming a thing of the past as more and more people just become antisocial. I mean, I don't have any friends to invite over. <laughs> so... Yeah, and at the same time, though, sometimes having couch co-op as an option is still a cute idea. <laughs> well, you would think that if it has online co-op, that it should automatically have couch co-op, because it should be, at that point, it, it's already set to be a two-player game, so you would think, but you never know. I, what I don't like is what they do with these games like we've been discussing with Monster Hunter World and Dragon's Crown and stuff, where you can't just start the game up and co-op with somebody you have to go through this whole like tutorial and with dragon's crown you have to beat the game first and then you can do the drop-in co-op and stuff like that they need to stop that yeah and even though it's a short story at around five hours if you know what you're doing and following it pretty quick that's still like five hours to play the game just to play with other people <laughs> yeah it's like you know i just want to put it in and play but all right, let's see what's up next. Contains the full game and gives you access yeah, to Captain just a Toad quick Treasure five hours, Cap. A small loan of a million dollars. Steal yourself for old school action in an all new Gothic castle. Okay, the side so Bloodstain. Action of yore shall rise once more in Bloodstain Ritual of the Night. And so, the young lady Miriam, host of the Alchemist's Curse, must use her unwanted gifts to slay the demons wrought by the curse's original host, Jeebel. 
Yo, this, these powers, this looks like a updated Castlevania. I'm digging it. And gravity to her will. And dart about Jeebel's castle at lightning speed. Here, the laws of reality and 2D side scrollers don't apply. Throughout the castle, a treasure trove of side quests, deadly tasks, and small touches flesh out the campaign. Your body is covered with. Even though it really is, it's actually Beyond not like story. official Castlevania, that's why it's called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I think it's the person who actually, you know, does make the Castlevania games, but since I think they left uh, Konami or something, they just made it a different name because they technically don't own the IP anymore, I think. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna lie, for, for a simple game, like, those graphics look pretty impressive. Like, it's, it's very polished looking, and, um, I would probably own that game. I will give that one a, a 7 out of 10 on my excitement list. I, I, that game looks pretty cool. Especially since it was like a Kickstarter thing and a lot of people were getting worried that it was going to be another like Mighty Number no. 9 and not turn out or stuff would be changed. And this looks pretty good for what they're promising the fans so far. Oh my god, listen so up. So I might say like 6 of 7. Okay. 6 of 7? That's pretty high. Six out of ten or six out of seven? Six two seven out oh, of ten. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I'm gonna say around a seven two. And uh speaking of Mighty Number no. Nine, that was like one of my first streams ever, by the way, and uh that game can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo needs to buy Naruto and make an MMO RPG. Ouch. Oh no. I'm not a... I mean I guess it could be interesting. I'm I I'll just be quiet. Oh, let's see what the next this one summer. is. So bloodstained. I'm, I'm kind of like that. Time has come to build a new world and take on the children of Hargon. On an empty island, you'll ally Ooh, yourself with the mysterious Yay. Malron, This one I want. From monstrous forces. Enlist the ten out of ten. Build and fight along ten out of ten right here. Or unite with three other builders to create your own island in local co-op or online. You'll gather materials. Craft objects and tools, and reach new heights by building any structure you can imagine. Now you can dash, glide, play in first person, explore underwater, and warp all over the new retro inspired map. If you own the previous game on a Nintendo Switch system, you can craft a legendary builder's outfit. And the Dragon Lord's throne. Just to be sure, it's showing Dragon Quest Builders 2, right? Yes! Okay, because I keep having to refresh it on the different screen to make sure board. I don't accidentally spoil something by commenting, so I pretty much wait for you to say something. Oh my god, like, okay. So, if you guys The first didn't... one was surprisingly fun. I actually made myself stop playing because I thought I was progressing too fast, but yeah. I liked it. Story-driven Minecraft. And I... Fun. I, and I do have the first one on PS4, and I did do kind of like a small stream on it, but I, I first time I saw it, I of course, I was watching her play. Um, but if you didn't hear, they said if you own Dragon Quest Builders, the original one for the Switch, when you get the second one, there's some special craftable items for, like, wardrobe and stuff. And so that'll probably make me buy both for the Switch, to be honest, even though I already own it for PS4. Like... I'm not even a Minecraft fan. Like, I don't play Minecraft. Never have played Minecraft in my life. I play a... It's a Minecraft clone called uh, Creativerse, which is kind of like Minecraft, but more polished as far as the graphics look. And uh, but, but Dragon Quest Builders... And I think I heard... I, I didn't hear it in the trailer, I don't think, or unless I missed it, but um, they're including farming this time around, aren't they? There was a simple farming mechanic the first time around, but I don't know if I got far enough in the chapters to really see it, but it looks like it takes a much bigger part of the game this time. Okay. And I am all for it. Yes, I'm going to give Left that one. Left farming on it, you get my attention. That one is a 10 out of 10 for me. That's that's a game I'm really excited about when I get my Switch. So I'm going to give that one a 10 out of 10. And I, I just... Game, I want it. <laughs> yeah, I just bypassed the 9 because... I mean, it probably is more around a 9, because there's a couple of other... I mean, let's face it, there's an older game that's making it a 10 out of 10 for me to get a Switch. I'm getting Octopath Traveler. I'm going to have it. I'm going to own it. That's my game. Um, 
but this one is is right up there with that and it's because i mean as soon as that trailer started and that dragon quest music started playing i was like okay i'm getting this like that's mm. all it took that's all it took something special about that dragon quest music for me it's so nostalgic it, it makes you want to cry right like when i was playing dragon i get quest... goosebumps <laughs> during the title screens when i watch it yeah when i was playing dragon quest 11 on stream and it did that whole opening scene i was just sitting there with this biggest grin on my face it was so funny all right let's or see what's next which headlines to come but first a word from mr koizumi another word from mr well, koizumi how's it looking next you think with their budget we they'd be able to sync his word, that classic words RPG up with his mouth there, right? Please take a look. Is audio out of sync? Um, I don't think so. I just think the it's, person who's speaking dull. English for him, he's just trying to the like that's when he starts genre, talking the in the way that we do, like yeah, in a different sentence structure. Yeah, it's a dub. I was making a joke about oh. not matching. <laughs> With the okay. most impressive scope so and a I'm excited about this. Um, I talked about this right Where before stream. In Grisha. For no one does this ring truer than the luminary, the boy that prophecy says. Oh, I'm salty. And protect the world from a terrible <laughs> it's, In a odd twist of fate, it's great, but I'm salty. <laughs> from him. On the day he becomes an adult. He finally discovers his true heritage Dragon Quest and the Eleven powers is so that pretty. make him the luminary. When he goes to the king of the largest kingdom for guidance, he is dubbed Darkspawn. So begins the perilous journey of a hunted hero and the ragtag band of adventurers who will join him on his quest to set things right. Together they'll explore the towns and so terrain pretty. of the sprawling detailed land Erdrea. Monsters roam free of random encounters. When you engage them, choose your strategy wisely in turn-based battles. You must know when to attack, when to heal, when to use magic, and when to switch your party member's orders. As you do, you'll earn skill points which can be used to teach party members attacks, spells, and improve their abilities. You can also collect materials so you can forge weapons, armor, and accessories. Looking for an item? Then help people out in side quests. Or try your hand at the casino. Or horse racing. <laughs> Erdrea is full of We have too many gamblers in the chat that will play time, that casino. The player has the power <laughs> to choose on the fly between the land's gorgeous HD vistas and the 2D 16 bit glory of all. Yo, that 2D 16 bit is so this is also amazing. the first version of the game with fully orchestrated field and battle tunes. If you want, you can change between the original sound and the new one whenever you want. And you can also experience the journey with English or Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty cool that um, it has that 16 bit because um, on the 3DS version in Japan, you were supposed to be able to switch between like a 3D version that could work for the 3DS and then like the old school version to play it as. Yeah. First time players and veterans should also look forward to new stories. Each sees one of the main cast members stepping into the spotlight, shedding new light on hidden truths. Ooh. This hero's adventure has truly leveled up. Definitive Dragon Edition S. 11 S. Echoes of an Elusive Age. Definitive Edition. Launching exclusively on Nintendo Switch this fall. Okay, again. 10 out of 10 for me. Love that game, just from what little bit I've played of it already. And, uh, you know, a definitive, definitive edition with all those bonus extras. And, yeah, like you said, that character model work there. I mean, if you can find my video, my VOD for when I played the Dragon Quest, that's all we could talk about was mm -hmm. the, uh, the the detail. In it. Like, they looked cartoonish, but some of the details gave you that feel of them, that being real. And, uh, and during the game I just had to keep stopping and looking around because I had to look everything was so pretty like mm. I just had to look at it so pretty mm. so pretty 
but yeah, so I'm it, most most of the Dragon Quest titles. I'm of course I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be uh, excited about. So that's that's a good bonus. So so far, you know, the Dra Dragon Quest Builders two and this this elusive age one might be worth it. Might See, be and Ninten this Nintendo Direct is starting to redeem itself a little. Yeah, we're getting there for sure. While we just announced the addition of these new stories. There will be more new information to share in the future. Please look forward to more new information to share in the future, he says. For now, let's continue with more Nintendo Switch headlines. All right, let's see what's up. A Disney Zoom Zoom game Zoom like you've Zoom? never seen before. Oh, what's up, Teddy? <laughs> These stuffed Disney toys took the world by storm, oh, and my now goodness. they're ready for an after-hours party at the Toy Store. I don't in think Disney anyone Zoom asked Zoom for this. Festival. I mean, it doesn't, friends look... And family in a it doesn't look awful, it's super cute, but why? why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's cute, but why? I guess it looks like it's, well you know, a set of party games. Hard pass. Yeah, a little bit of a hard pass. Without talking puzzles. Connect matching Tsum Tsum to clear them and set a high score. Hey, I could do without Tsum Tsum. The game also features a two-player mode for local and online competitive matches. But you know what? They they have to make games for kids. You know, Disney they have to. Yeah. That's that's the beauty of of Nintendo is they've been really good about making We're family making friendly up a stuff. Distress call in the Atlas Star System. But this time, it's all right. I'll pause it for a second. Um, so yeah, Tsum Tsum, no thanks. Make just make Tsum Tsum mobile, mobile and call it a day. Um. In fact, mm -hmm. one of that looked like the um, that one that Yokai Watch Bubble Popper game where you. <laughs> yeah, I played that briefly. Yeah. Oh yeah! Imagine that this has online and Toad doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Priorities. You know, here's the thing though. Like in the past, even going back to the original Nintendo's, like Disney was always known. Like the Disney games were always known for being decent games. Like quality wise and uh animation wise like you could play a disney game and it look and feel like you were playing a cartoon and i get that like they have to make stuff that's going to appeal more to kids because a lot of consoles these days obviously are focusing on the adult market mm -hmm. so you know it's so kind of nintendo was like the main systems to own for family friendly but with the switch and stuff they are getting like more m-rated games and more <laughs> mature games and stuff like that yeah oh my god the gamblers are in effect in the chat <laughs> all right we're gonna um we're gonna take a look at this one i can already tell you like i'll probably snooze through this one far from friendly in fact it's none other than star wolf's infamous lieutenants andrew oikini pigma dengar and the great leon now Screw Peppy, Fortnite. Falco, and Slippy have no <laughs> choice but to hunt them down, like the animals they are, in a challenging new series of missions you can only find in the spring update of Starlink Battle for Atlas. Every member of the Star Fox team has their own special pilot ability and skill tree, plus each pilot can take on any of the new missions and also Fox's missions from the base I mean, game. I like it's Star Fox, but I think they've done too many of them now. But don't expect Wolf to play fair. Look forward to news on the rest of the additional really? content, you think so? such as Star Wars. I mean, for the fans of it, I don't think they gave out really enough for them. Ready when the Star Fox team joins the Starlink I'm personally not one of them, because I didn't really know much about the games, but... Alright, yeah. yeah. So the thing for me is, like, I, I enjoyed the original Star Fox because of its uniqueness, and um, there was, you know, the, uh, Star Fox 64, and then they made a mistake by doing one called Star Fox Assault, and... Um, it, it kind of hurt the series a little bit. Um, they tried to bring the one onto the, the DS, I think it was. Uh, it was mm -hmm. okay, but it started going back more towards, like, the retro look. But I, I think this... Um, yeah, it's exactly, Atomic Prime. This is a, this is, I feel like this is a weak attempt to revive Star Fox rather than giving a solid Star Fox title. And in this, you're not even the main character. You're side characters. Well... And, it says update available, so isn't this just an add-on to an already existing Star Fox game? Yeah, but that's but that's what I'm saying is like I I don't think the the Star Fox game itself is doing that well, and mm. in, instead of like trying something new and trying something innovative, it's like okay, well let's just make the 
normal like like these are these are the characters that when you were doing something they would just pop up on the bottom of the screen and make funny noises if you were doing something wrong or they were calling for help yeah and uh now i i don't necessarily want to play as them Yeah, if if they put the money and effort into it, like they do stuff like Legend of Zelda, it'd be a different story. But when when people think about Nintendo, they don't really think of Star Fox being a mascot for Nintendo. True. And he should be because it's because of Star Fox that Super Nintendo had as many sales upon opening as it did. I mean, people saw this new 3D polygon looking thing, and it brought so many people because I mean the opening titles were like pilot wings and stuff but most people bought their Super Nintendo back then because of Star Fox um, mm. uh, but Nintendo was like eh, he's kind of like the bastard child <laughs> you know, he's he's not their their like go to guy alright let's see what's up next a heartfelt fantasy adventure he, props up this one's again. for you Another season, another reason. It's delaying, so I can't respond it's okay. yet. It's okay, that's why I didn't say what it was. Interact okay. with townsfolk <laughs> daily. Grow vegetables and fruits at the farm. This is all you, though. Cook some fish. Oh, give me my money! Absolutely, yes. Or even raise monsters. Is this a 10 out of 10 for you? This fantastical circle of life will yep. keep you coming. I mean, back it's more. like, I, apparently, I'm so excited. I did I used the wrong Only saying. I meant take my money. <laughs> I played the crap out of this on the 3DS. You may become more than just friends. I definitely like to own like a slightly revamped version for the Switch. Has in store for you, exclusively in this new version of the game. Yeah, more than just friends. <laughs> Room Factory 4 Special will be ripe for the playing later this year. Okay, Room Factory 4 Special. Special. Tell us about and I it. like how they add that newlywed story for afterwards, because usually I don't get to the point of marrying in the Harvest Moon or other Rune Factory games because there's not much to do afterwards. Like, there kind of is, but then it mostly stops. But I think the newlywed stories would kind of um, motivate me to um, play it to that point. Yeah, and plus for those of you that don't know, she hates kids, so by the time it's time to have kids in a game, that's when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone say waifu territory? There you go. So Did I say RuneScape on accident? I can't talk. <laughs> yeah. I meant Rune Factory. Yeah. I, I am so excited. I can't. English. That's okay. I want it! That's okay. Um, Alright, well, we'll move on because I don't really have a whole lot of input on that one. Fantasy farming. And? Mine. And here it goes. There, The reveal. Look at this slow reveal on Rune Factory 5. five. Yes! In the future. Freaking yes! Another 10 out of 10. Soon, a time will Cause come the Rune Factory, the people who made Rune Factory 4, um, soul. their company went bankrupt. So people who are super loser fans like me are like, when's the next one gonna come? So there's like no hope. And now they're saying it could be like a 2020 release. I think from the last thing I heard, and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so much happy. And so people are even commenting like, is this what happiness feels like? <laughs> Yeah, RuneScape 5 coming so soon? I don't know. <laughs> am I really seeing RuneScape again? No, you're not. They're trolling. Oh, that's making me think I am. <laughs> it's trolling. Um, okay, okay. Um, I I mean, okay, so I've owned RuneScape 4 for a while. Or Rune Fa now I'm saying <laughs> it. Now I'm saying Thanks a lot, Prime. Thanks a lot. <laughs> So I've owned Rune Factory 4 for a while on my 3DS. I still haven't played it. I tried that one on PS3, what was it, uh, Tides of Destiny or something like that. What was it called? Rune... Yeah, it was Tides of Destiny. Yeah, I think I played it for a couple minutes and was like, meh. Um, I think I would like the series if I'd actually sit down and play it. But I, I, it's one of those things where I have to be you in have the to mood. be in the mood. Yeah, I have to be they, in the mood. They usually have a slow start to tutorialize and story and stuff. All right, let's move on to the next one. We're only we're we're not even we're barely halfway through. Before those souls become monsters. I need to calm down anyway. In this action RPG <laughs> Too much excitement. Developers of I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere. Oh, this is Step Okay, this is the one from the people that did I Am Setsuna and Lost Sphere. This one I'm actually pretty excited about when I saw it. Yeah, so far this looks okay. To uphold these tenants 
Kagachi must travel between the living world and the beyond to rescue lost souls from a terrible fate, becoming monsters. Onunaki. When battling these creatures, the lost souls this has a, a, a unique kind of art style to it. New powers. <laughs> Kids' these animation at the beginning. Different, so you must choose the right soul for the situation at hand. In this deep single-player campaign, there will be many battles. You will fight, and you will become stronger. Those who fall to grief are lost, and the lost don't reincarnate. The very foundations of reincarnation will begin to crumble when Oninaki launches in summer 2019. Okay, okay, so so who's feeling that game? I, I'm going to say that's probably going to rate around a 6 for me. Um, it looks neat, though. Um, I think I, I think it would be a game I'd be interested in getting when it dropped down to, like, 20 bucks. Yeah, um, I tried, like, a demo of Lost Fear or whichever one had a free demo, and I didn't care much for it. The battles were a bit too weird, and I couldn't get used to it. Um, but this one I could get into because it's, you know, the action RPG type of thing. I do like the cell shaded art style they are using, and it looked like each weapon had its own little skill tree from that one point, so I think I would get it. Yeah, well, my thing is it is made by Square Enix, and everybody that knows me knows I'm a huge Square Enix fan, so it's got that going for it. Um, but, eh, I, I did play I Am Setsuna, and I, I did kind of like it. I just, that was another one that was really hard for me to kind of get into, story-wise and everything. So, mm -hmm. um, but, but it did look good, and it had a unique art style as well. And, no, not Apex. I don't want to hear about Apex. <laughs> That's, a Apex is... Okay, so Fortnite is for 12 to 14 year olds, and Apex is for 16 to 18 year olds. It's basically the same fucking game. Oops, same game. Well, see what, what you did by saying Apex, man? You made me drop the F bomb. I think that's the first time I dropped the F bomb on a podcast. You're going to have to eat some soap later. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> Family friendly. Family friendly. All right, what's next? <laughs> Cars. Robots and Yoshi's in a world of craft. You know what that means? Yoshi's crafted world is almost here. This time, we'd like to put the many facets of these crafty courses on display. 15 year olds do get a game, it's called Minecraft. Yoshi, you'll go rafting. <laughs> Race solar. Cars. Okay, Yoshi. And tear through the sky on a plane. Nice shot, Yoshi. I love all the, um, crafted type of graphics they've been doing for a while, like when they made Kirby Epic Yarn, that was super cute, and the fabric details are really cute, and then, uh, I think they did, um, a Yarn Yoshi one, yeah, Yoshi's Whirly World, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It was like, Yoshi and somebody else. Nice shot, Yoshi! It was Yoshi and somebody else, it was Yoshi and... Yeah, Yoshi and Kirby. Today, no. We'll really? That's something else? The one for the 3DS is called Yoshi and somebody else's Wooly World. I can't remember. Yoshi and Poochie, I think. That's it. Yeah, Poochie. I was talking about, like, the first one. <laughs> mm. Like the Wii or something. But first, another update from Mr. Koizumi. Okay. I can wear a cardboard box, yeah! Okay, so Yoshi. Um, Those games do tend to be kind of fun. And uh, mm. the graphics look really good on it. Um, I'd probably go as, as high as a 5 on that one. 5 out and of I, 10 for me. And I think there's actually already a demo out for it for people to try. I've seen back and forth. Some people say it's really, really, really good. Other people say it's good if not too easy. But I can understand what the Yoshi's saying too easy because I think they said that about Woolly World. They're not really supposed to be terribly difficult, I think. But it gets difficult if you want to be a collector. Like, it's actually a little bit difficult to get every single thing in the game, because it's usually pretty nicely hidden, at least in my experience. Hmm. Yeah, if you get from point A to point B, it's pretty easy, but if you want to collect everything and every, it's going to take a couple tries. Yeah. I, I, I've yet to 100% most of those games. <laughs> How's it going so far? Next, we have a follow-up on the latest installment in one of our long-running series, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Okay, so they're going to talk about an update to Fire Emblem. Mm. 
Oh my. What could have brought you here? Fire Emblem Three Houses. The continent of Fodland, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. <laughs> yeah, rule 34 Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south, I'm not showing any drop frames, Ron. By a more than 1,000 year old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north. I'm honestly surprised the uh, my tablet is handling it so well, if only. By the royal I mean, if not for, like, being a few seconds behind, to the east, it hasn't really stuttered. Of oh, you mean in the animation no itself? Emperor. Okay, I was about to say, I'm looking at my OBS, it says 0.0, .0 oh. drop frames, which is rare for me. <laughs> consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, Fodlan and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. In the Fire Emblem Three Houses game, you are the hero the world needs. You start out as a mercenary traveling with a group led by your father, Geralt. After an unexpected yeah, that, that, <laughs> reveals an unknown power. When it shows the anime looking parts Derek of it, it does look a little bit where you'll receive an offer like, to teach at the officer's academy. Not that smooth, I guess. Around that same time, mm. you alone begin to see a mysterious like, girl in the game wise, not who appears within your mind. Like the cutscenes? Yeah. Like for some reason the 3D models like it's purposely not like 60 frames per second. I'm not sure if that's a design choice or like a three software um cap choice of the church kind of Saros, thing. The main yeah, religion sure. of Fodlan, as well as the knights of Saros. I mean, not only does the, the church art and serve stuff to looks decent order in this in game Fodlan, though. Its monastery also houses the officers academy. Those who train there will go on to shoulder the future of Fodlan. The Officer's Academy is comprised of three houses. The Black Eagles is for students from the Adrestian Empire, including the house leader Pokemon and future emperor, Edelgard. <laughs> the Blue Lions boasts Prince Dimitri of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus as its house leader. I'm actually this surprised there's not a game out like that, like Kingdom. Waifu Trainer, and then the you go Golden out and you Deer throw Pokeballs to capture your own Lions. Waifus and raise Their them. House leader is oh my god. Who is the heir <laughs> well, isn't there actually a game like that just without the Pokeballs? It's like you train your own princess or something? No idea. As a yeah, I think I saw a game like that where you, um, like raise a princess or something and try to help her become the best princess. Is that waifu? <laughs> waifu go where you just walk around and catch waifus? Oh god. Which house will you choose? That's funny. I'm not really smart Students enough for these strategy games, so I probably wouldn't get it, but Sometimes just if I had to pick a faction for the heck of it, I'd probably pick the Golden Deer, just because I think the person in charge of it looked interesting. To suppressing yeah. rebellions. Yo, it's a little These tan. may be class assignments, but the stakes in each battle are very real. Whether your students live or die will depend on your leadership. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody where it says uh, your students will live or die based on your leadership. Holy moly. It's okay, you'll kill a couple students. No biggie. <laughs> put that kind of stress on my shoulders. Master the study That's usually why I think people liked Fire Emblem because it felt more real and your choices had consequences because they've had permadeath since like the beginning. <laughs> and well, so, except for the newer one, so they have the option to take it out depending you which version you get. Paul says pretty much the same as any normal school <laughs> then. <laughs> own their abilities. Through combat experience oh my goodness. and study, you can help your students reach their full potential. For the people who are frustrated at too many of the schoolgirls and they just send them out to die. And what cruel so, world do we live in? <laughs> the name of this and game is Fire Emblem. Support each other on the battlefield. Three houses, right? Yeah, three houses. Well, I'm sure it'll show it again. Something like that, yeah. But yeah, I'm also surprised to see that they kind of put some kind of academy management into this. Sort of. Mm-hmm. A change that they did put in, though, is that um, to make it seem more like a war or something, they put, like, nameless groups of soldiers to add bulk to your army. Three so it's not just, like, a group of five people having a little Three spat houses. in the field. Yeah. Yeah, it actually really doesn't look horrible. Like, 
there are aspects of it that look cool. I just don't know if I'd like that strategy-based field stuff. Fire Emblem Three. Yeah, I mean, I would love release. to get it, but like I said, I'm not, honestly not smart enough for these strategy games. I have tried Fire Emblem games, but after a point when different goals come into play, and it gets harder, I was like, I can't do this. Oh, I can't let my look. people die. I'll feel too bad. <laughs> Originally, we announced that Fire Emblem Three Houses Also, let me know if I'm cutting spring. out too much. You're fine. But more development time okay. will be necessary. Yeah, Fire Emblem Three Houses. And available so the July. New date is July 26. That means we'll have to ask you to wait a little longer. But we hope you'll look forward to the next generation of Fire Emblem all the same. Time for some more Nintendo Switch headlines. I was waiting for him to snap his fingers. In this mm -hmm. next entry of this iconic series. The last player standing wins. 99 players. But only one reigns supreme. Okay, what's this? This is... Tetris oh, no, 99. get out of here. I don't want this. I could... They've the made enough of this shit. I don't want none of, nothing to like do with no it. Other. I can't see it yet. Let me see it. Come on, catch up. Online members can battle for dominance in this free to download game. Oh. <laughs> when this <laughs> When this thing first came up, I was like, "What?" <laughs> A battle royale. I guess everything is going to be. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everything is going the battle royale now. It's just ridiculous. And that's a bonus. I think this is a freaking um, Nintendo subscription only. Because <laughs> they really wanted it. It's like the the apex of Tetris. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I better I think be careful to cry a little. <laughs> I better be careful. Atomic Prime's pretty pretty um defensive over Apex right now, so uh, All right, let's see what we got. What's next? Prepare to kill. Survive. I have no interest in this one either, but daylight. Imagine this. It's You're weird though, even though I I laugh at it. Fear. It's like Struggling I still really do like the theme song of Tetris. Then, you meet another survivor. <laughs> Well, it's technically it's free, but it's only if you're if you have the Nintendo online. Run. So you technically do have to pay, I believe. For items. Open the gates and escape with your life. Or yeah, take I don't. The role of the this game looks trash. So-called survivors, your next victims. Um, what's with it being oh, so yes. contrasty? Satisfying. Like it's Just so. Yeah, the textures are mass. really not Terrors. good looking. And but I think this was earn. first on Steam as an indie game, so I can understand, system, I guess, if it doesn't look that nice. But yeah, discover the true meaning of horror when Dead I've by seen Daylight some people play it on Nintendo Switch this fall. Yeah, I have, no, I have no, zero interest in that game. This dog mm -mm. will ruin your day. All right, I'm gonna let you catch up. <laughs> uh, we'll go. Well, I'm still at Dead by Daylight. I don't know how long it is, but yeah, you're fine. I just uh paused it here on this one for a second well I mean it's okay you can keep it going well, no. um, I just just in case you had anything to say on it um and yeah I, I, I already said what I said as I'm talking because I know I'm behind now so it's like I'll just say whenever I see it okay you're fine well this right here um this dog will ruin your day mm -hmm. um this is some undertale stuff right off the bat so mm-hmm from, for the players that completed Undertale. Undertale was alright, I just didn't think... I thought it was way overhyped. From the way people talked about it, and then when I went to actually go play it, it was like two different things. Yeah, like, people on my D&D &D group, this one guy keeps saying, Oh, I really think you should try Undertale, it seems right up your alley, because it's like super cute, and, and I'm like, I don't know how it's super cute, I mean... It has cute pixel graphics, I guess, but when I see actual gameplay of it, because I actually watched it, so I kind of spoiled myself on it, it doesn't look that great, but... Alright, Prime, take it easy, dude. Now for a yeah, I don't really have an opinion on that game, to be honest. I mean, their version of, uns of the censored trailer or uncensored is kind of funny, but... <laughs> I think, um... The funniest uncensored trailer I've seen recently was for that one I sent you where it was like, had the guy, it was like a 16-bit looking game and it's like, it's your time to shine, it's your time to be a legend, he steps out and dies immediately and it says, oh, oh <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Yeah, that was great. These these kind of games, it looks it looks nice, but I have no interest in mech games whatsoever. Yeah, I don't have much interest, but I can say it looks really cool. Oh, it looks fantastic. All right, Tevi, take it easy. Thanks for dropping in. Later. If you weren't selected for the survey, we also welcome your feedback via social media. We appreciate your feedback and hope to make this game the best it can be. We have more to say about Damon X Machina, so please follow the official Nintendo yeah, Twitter account. So you I, can I, I probably wouldn't get that game, but it, it looks pretty. Yeah, it's cool that they already have like prototype missions available and you can give them their feedback with the survey, I think, and you help them make the game better before it's finished. Realistic racing is headed for Nintendo. I don't know if they said that yet, though. <laughs> Grid Autosport comes fully loaded yeah. with a mix of high-speed thrills, believable handling, and a difficulty level that scales to your skills. You'll feel like a pro racer as you master the world's fastest cars to win motorsport's most exhilarating races. From the prestigious circuit of Spa-Francorchamps to the narrow city streets of Barcelona. I mean, I don't play many racing games. Um, cars. cars look realistic, though. I'll give it that. Holy crap. Like motion controls and custom controls. Yeah, those cars look nice. Players can race online or locally. And Meh, racing race game. Yeah. <laughs> the cars look nice, though. I mean... Mm -hmm. Derby, when Grid Autosport speeds onto Nintendo's they do look pretty nice. Enter the Viking Age to experience okay. Senua's okay. journey again. Or for the very first time. They do have a lot of options for controls too, which is kind of nice. Holy crap, this looks good. Experience psychosis. Hellblade pulls players deep into the mind of Senua. This broken Celtic warrior will embark on a haunting vision quest through Viking Hell to fight for the soul of her dead lover. Hellblade has won multiple awards. Yo, this looks good. For performance, audio and artistic achievement. So what are you at now? <laughs> it's showing find out why oh that looked good i don't know what the gameplay looked like but I'll, I'll let you catch up on that i don't know what the gameplay is gonna look like on that but at least those little cut scenes for that looked amazing is it Sanua's sacrifice yeah yeah okay and that little baby doll thing that popped out that was freaking end. creepy <laughs> oh my god so yeah that I, i'd be interested in seeing some more about that one yeah, I think that released on Steam first as an indie game, and it received some pretty good praise. And it's supposed to be dealing with the, the protagonist who has some psychosis. And they said it's actually, they thought they did pretty well on hitting a, a person with mental issues of some sort. Yeah, that or was something crazy. like that. I'll let this play, because I don't give a crap about Mortal Kombat, but I'll let you guys talk about it. Character variations, plus new characters and returning veterans taking up the fight. I quit playing Mortal Kombat after Mortal Kombat 3. <laughs> these players take control of two adorable Yarnies. Control both Yarnies on your own in single player, or play with a friend in local co-op for some puzzling platforming fun when Unravel 2 comes to Nintendo Unravel is okay. For the first time, I think I showed you the first one when you were here. Mm -hmm. With revamped gameplay and features tailored to the system like motion aiming and touch Let's see Assassin's Creed American 3 Revolution. Remastered. Explore one of the most iconic mm. eras in history as you Me. fight for freedom. I mean, the only Assassin's Creed I was a big fan of is uh Black Flag, the one where you're a pirate. The standalone game, Assassin's Creed Liberation Remastered, will be included when they launch together on May 21st. Final Fantasy oh. fans. Oh, I gotta pause it. <laughs> I gotta pause it. Hold on, you guys. It's at that point. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I gotta catch up now. Oh. Are you okay over there? <sighs> oh, I'm caught up now. I see it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to show it now. All right. I gotta change clothes, hang on. <laughs> I'm just kidding here. Oh jeez. Yes! We can also announce that Chocobo's mystery dungeon yes. will release on <laughs> All this. I think this might be over ten! Final Fantasy IX will journey on to Nintendo. All of this today. Once wow, that one came out always on the day of the direct. That's all for today's Nintendo Switch headline. Oh man. Okay. Oh my goodness. So we just saw 
Final Fantasy 7, The Chocobo Dungeon, and Final Fantasy 9. You guys, seriously? <laughs> That's why I gotta have a Switch. Mm-hmm. That's why I have to... I, I gotta have it. That's, um... Final Fantasy 7 being my favorite RPG of all time. The one that actually got me into RPGs. And uh, I know it's not a remake. It's it's just a re-release. And it's not, you know, pixelated and stuff. It looks more like... But still the... having Final Fantasy 7 wherever you go or on the big screen is, like, pretty good. Yeah, and, and granted, you can get Final Fantasy 7 pretty much anywhere. They have it on PC. You can play it on a PlayStation 1. They have it in the PlayStation Store. They have the Final Fantasy Steam release. And all that stuff looks really good. Um, but, you know, giving it that nice polish over and getting rid of all the pixelated graphics, which take away some of the magic, but just give you, like, a really good gaming experience, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. Like, I'm ready. My body... So how far over 10 is this? <laughs> my, my body is ready. Um, <laughs> definitely 11 out of 10. Um, definitely 11 out of 10. Actually, if they're, whatever the highest number is what it's going to be. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for the new Final Fantasy stuff. Well, the old Final Fantasy stuff redone. And you were telling me something about the Choco Dungeon. I didn't hear them say it there, but what, what are they doing different in the Chocobo Dungeon thing? Um, apparently this was actually a Wii game first, the Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, and they're kind of remaking or re-releasing it on the Switch, and it's called Everybody, and I guess that means that they're making so every monster in the game can be, quote, tamed or befriended to be your buddy, so that's why they're calling it that. And I think they're also adding local co-op to it. Okay. I mean... I think. Hey, I'm down. I'm down. I'm ready. I wanna, if I had a Switch and it was out now, I'd go get it. <laughs> All right. I did have it for the Wii. It was pretty cute. All right, let's see what these last little things are here. Oh, this one I thought was actually pretty cool for, like, a random thing. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what it is. Like, it, it's, it looks alright. Made by Platinum Games, so all good. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Didn't Platinum put out a Ninja Turtle game? Didn't they do the, um... Mutants in Manhattan. I don't know, did they? I, I, I think was... so, because it looks just like this. Mm. So they're like very good action game creators. It's like, I'm pretty interested in this. It looks pretty crazy and fast paced, but in a fun way. They made Bayonetta. Mm hmm. Yeah. Did they also make Wonderful 101? I, I don't think know. so. Don't it know. wasn't as well known, though. Yeah, at first I was a little bit unsure, but the more this trailer plays out, like, this is looking sick. Especially if it, you know, runs that smoothly with all that stuff going on. Oh, for the PlayStation 1 first? I didn't know that. The Chocobo Dungeon. Yeah. I only knew about the Wii version. I think I had a Chocobo Dungeon for the DS. I want to say, but I, I could be wrong. It could have been Chocobo Racers. I don't know. <laughs> Can somebody buy me a switch? Can somebody buy me a switch? <laughs> Holy shit! What you just witnessed is Astral Chain, a brand new action game in development at Platinum Games. So that's Astral Chain. Okay. It looked like two characters were fighting together during battle, didn't it? I hope you're excited to learn. Even comes out this year for it being a surprise. Please stay tuned. <laughs> And speaking of Platinum Games, I'm what? sure you're very curious about Bayonetta 3. Oh, Bayonetta 3? Just assured, the developers of Bayonetta 3 are hard at work, and I hope you're looking hmm? forward to learning more. They said something about Bayonetta 3. Oh. will be the last announcement of the day. Please, check it out. The last announcement of the day. Okay. 
So what they say about it then? Just uh, so I don't. I guess they're gonna say it right now. Oh, okay. I guess. It was just saying. Speaking of platinum games, you know everybody's hyped up for the release of Bayonetta three or whatever. I don't know what this is. This doesn't look like Bayonetta to me. Oh, this looks like Zelda. Yeah, this is a Zelda game. Mm-hmm. Oh, are th is this... Are they remaking Wind Waker? Mm-mm. No? I thought that when I first saw it. But then I saw the style of how Link looked. I'm like, huh, I don't think so. Huh. Link's Awakening. Ah. Oh my god, that looks cute. I don't know why they made it look so cute, but I'm like, I kind of want it just... Oh my god, that is the cutest thing ever. Look how he runs. <laughs> look how he... <laughs> he looks like a little toy to me. Yeah, they look like little plastic toys you get in the little, like, egg machines or whatever. Oh my goodness, there was a Goomba in there. It was definitely one of the more different Legend of Zelda games. Oh my god. I never that... played it, but I just I remember seeing the chain chomps and stuff in it. That was cute. So that was super cute. At long last, 1993's Game Boy Classic, The Legend of Zelda. Um, I think Awakening. that's the last thing on here. It's just him talking after that. So I don't know guys, what do you think? Which uh what what of those games were you most looking forward to? And um I mean yeah, obviously you know which ones I'm looking forward to. Uh but what did you think? What did you think was the the highlight of that showcase? And uh, how about how about you? Christina? Okay, so the la the last thing I just want to make sure since it's it's finished saying that the Bayonetta three there was an announcement that I found on Facebook earlier. A bunch of stuff, and Bayonetta three is coming this year. That's what that's what it says so far anyway. Okay. But I just wa didn't want to say that in case that would spoil it or anything. Yeah. But since they mentioned Bayonetta three, that's coming. But I don't think they said it's it should be. Whatever, <laughs> no. Huh. Well, I think it's. At the very least, it, they're starting development, and it's going very well. Stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's. I think the whole thing is interesting, and I know there are a lot of people looking forward to Bayonetta. Mhm. Mm so, um, I don't know that I was a fan of them, but uh, one of my buddies who lives uh who lives nearby actually invited me to come over and play his Switch. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm playing Bayonetta. And I was like, okay, um, but I'm not going to come over and do that. So, uh, Yeah, as a whole, the Nintendo Direct was okay. There are some, there was some stuff in there that got my attention. Sure. Kind of weak compared to other ones. Hey, Paul, uh, well... Because well, I was hoping for Animal Crossing information, dang it! Yeah, what's up with the Animal Crossing? When are we going to find out about that? Because they've been teasing that with that Tom Nook thing for a while. Um, what were, what, what was it that, uh, you, what kind of things are you looking for, Paul? And, uh, Ron, Ron says he wasn't, he can't really look forward to anything, but did think that it was, there was definitely some interesting stuff in there. Definitely. Um... I wouldn't say that everything on there was like, I gotta have it, but you know, anything, anytime when they announce Final Fantasy stuff, I'm on it, so. Mm -hmm. So we're good there. And they at least, um, did the Rune Factory 4 re-release for someone that's a dorky farmer like me, and that Rune Factory in development made me very happy and hopeful. Because their studio isn't completely dead, but since they did dissolve, I'm not sure how good it would be. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping. HOPING! Oh, and also, I think for, like, the Japan Nintendo Direct, uh, they had some stuff that maybe didn't show here, so it's probably not going to get released. But they did. They're doing a Story of Seasons spinoff with Doraemon. Oh, okay. If anyone knows what that is. I think it's an anime, and I, I only know, the, like, the blue cat I see once in a while. I'll it's kind of like a crossover like Popo LaCroix was in Story of Seasons for the 3DS. Oh, come on. You guys know you're ready for that Tetris Royale. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's yeah. the most lit game on this list. I'm saying Tetris Royale and Tsum Tsum and uh, that little box game. 
Box boy and box girl. There you go. For the win. Best. I really want some Animal Crossing information, though. Every time I think about it, my stomach hurts. It's killing me so bad. Yep. For sure. Yo, Shadow Lady, what's going on? So, um, we did go a little bit over, which is fine, yeah. because, you know, it's it, it was a, a little bit, it was a lot of information to take in, and we wanted to do mm -hmm. something different with showing the video so that we're not just talking about it, um, which is fine. Um, but I did want to say that, uh, so that's what we're going to, next week, next week we're going to have uh, Paul Hebs on here. Oh, and also, I kind of want to know um, if anyone liked this kind of idea, like if a Nintendo Direct game new video comes out, if they would want to gather here and see it, or maybe we would make an exception and maybe stream it, like on the day of, if it's not too late, something like that. Okay. I, w I would definitely be down for that. And, uh... So yeah, since this was the first time, I just want people's opinions if this turned out okay for them. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes having stuff up, up on the screen like that helps with keeping people's attention, gives them something to look at. We've, we've tried it with a couple of things in the past, and we had some technical issues, but I think what we just did uh, ran really nice. I had no no trouble with OBS or whatnot, and um, so I, I think everything went pretty well as far as okay. that's concerned. And it's like, I also want to know if they would want to, like us to do a direct again whether it's when we can do it on the tuesday and um also because if like they release the direct but we have to do the stream beforehand because it's not out yet and sure. i see news about it i don't want to like spoil anything if that's what they want like sure. if they want to hear it with the direct with us you know yeah well definitely let us know guys if um if you're if you like this and you want us to cover these directs or not just with Nintendo, but anytime when there's like big announcements made by any of the consoles, um, let us know. Let us know. And uh, if if you could do it live, I totally would. I, I I don't know if there's a way to do that. We probably can. I could probably like when the directs come out. Yeah, I could probably do it live. Yeah, it, it probably depends on the time it comes out too, because the, this Nintendo Direct just came out. I think it started at 5 p.m. Eastern time, so yeah. I think it would work. Oh, uh, it's not against their oh. terms of service? Okay. I mean, oh, I, okay. it's kind of like when they host, uh, you know, other tournaments and stuff, so that's good. But, yeah, because I figure it would be like, I see reaction videos on YouTube all the time, so they probably mostly do it there. We would also be doing, like, live reactions or something. So, yeah, real quick, I want to give a shout-out um, to, to Paul Hebs. As you can see, the last thing he did was some music and performing arts. Uh, but he, he plays uh, <laughs> he plays Pokemon trading card, and yeah, you're very sweet, Shadow Lady. She does have a beautiful voice like an angel. I love her voice. I tell her that all the time. And uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for the compliments. So, um, if you ever want to uh, hear more of her talking, she does have her own YouTube channel. It's dead. It, it is. It's been kind of dead over there, <laughs> but she does have her own YouTube I'm channel, lazy. <laughs> and uh, on that YouTube channel, she she has reviewed many many games, done like little tutorials and things like that on them. So if you're interested, they're uh, mostly for pretty lame free to play MMOs though. <laughs> yeah. It's so if you're into MMOs, it's actually a really good channel to go to. And, uh, you know, drop a follow and try to get her to uh, put up some new videos. Here's the link for that if you want to go over there and give her a subscribe. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I told you it's dead. It's It might be dead, but it's not. And then um, what? we're going <laughs> to we're going to head out of here. Um, I'm going to leave you guys. Don't forget to uh, to go over and check out Paul Hebs. We're going to leave you with the best uh, greatest hit single Paul Hebs from today <laughs> I gotta do it a second time we're actually gonna keep the video up as well this is a story <laughs> about a titan and his quest for his revenge there once was a man named titan's revenge he was salty on me he got unfairly bad <laughs> oh yes <laughs> so he made an account look what you've done everybody off. But then Riot gave him his account back He never ever, ever looked back 
He wants to play Teemo forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, there you go. Paul Hebs with the uh, with the theme song. I'm actually going to play mm-hmm. that at the beginning of every one of my League of Legends streams from now on. You should. And uh, <laughs> 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 actually, you could join us next week. We'll have Paul Hebs on as a guest. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate thank you coming. You. And uh, again, just one last time, if you liked what we did, please send Titan the feedback, and we love opinions on it. Know if we should again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, send us feedback. Let us know. And uh, tomorrow, Pokemon giveaways again. Woo! If the chat doesn't try to give me a seizure like they did yesterday, so. Ooh, that was rough yesterday. <laughs> All right, guys, you have a good one, and uh, we'll see you next time. Right, Grace? Thank you, and bye. (laughs) Bye.